Hello and welcome back to Tech Week TV here at Callahan Innovation in Christchurch. Thank you so much for joining us from around the country. My name is Jake Miller. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Unfiltered. And today is the last session I'm going to be hosting before we head off to Dunedin for day four of Tech Week TV. And today I'm really honoured to be joined by Emily, the founder and CEO of Roma. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, and Menno, the lead developer and project manager of the Cacophony Project. Now, today's session is on innovation that's good for the world, a Christchurch showcase. So we're going to be delving into two companies that are doing some really exciting things in the world uh, and you know there's some great innovation happening here in Christchurch and um, to kick this off I'm going to pass over to Menno who's going to take us through a presentation on what the Cacophony project is uh, and then from there we're going to go into some questions around both these businesses so guys thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks Rick. So um, yeah I'm, I'm the technical lead at the Cacophony project and um as you probably know, as most New Zealanders would know, uh, the native birds in New Zealand are really suffering because of uh, introduced predators such as uh, possums, rats and, and stoats. So um, we're trying to do something about that. Um, the, the problem here is that um, native, uh, the native birds in New Zealand uh, evolve without mammals. So uh, they have got no natural defences against the, the animals that the Europeans mainly have, have brought over from. Um, and we're in a situation now where 80% of uh, native birds in New Zealand are endangered or in decline. It's also a real cost to new, the country because uh, we spend over 70 million a year on controlling and managing these pests and we're not, not really dealing with the problem so it's an ongoing uh, uh, problem, ongoing cost. And um, there's some real benefits to agriculture as well if we can deal with these predators because um, they, some of them spread disease, uh, if they get into livestock there's, there's real issues there. So the current technology um, is, is pretty basic. Uh, in terms of monitoring, we use things like chew cards, which are basically pieces of plastic that you nail to a tree, and you come back later and check to see for bike marks and see what kind of animals you're dealing with. And, and in terms of elimination, we do things like uh, the, the very commonly seen uh, trap boxes. That if you've been on a walk anywhere in New Zealand, you, you will have seen, seen these. And uh, they, they work, but they're not very effective. Um, our research indicates that less than 1% of animals who go near one of these traps actually interact with them. So there's a lot that can be done, and um, that's what we're about. So we're an open source startup. Uh, we're, we're, we're dedicated to increasing birdsong in New Zealand by applying digital technology to predator control. So it's, it's a bit of a mouthful. Um, in terms of open source, what we mean there is that we're, all the hardware and software we make is, is uh, free for anyone to, to use and, 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 and apply to other use cases, um, and also free for, to contribute back to the project, and, and we have a, a lot of people throughout New Zealand who, who do that on a regular basis. Um, we're all about increasing birdsong, that's our metric. Uh, if birdsong is, is increasing, uh, then we know that, that predator, controls, predator controls are working. And we're all about digital te technology. I think we're only really scratching the surface in, in terms of what digital technology has to offer in this space. And that, that's what we're all about. So um, our philosophy really is, is we're looking for radical improvements to the, to the way these animals are being dealt with at the moment. And, um, and, it, and we're doing that, as I said, through digital technology. And we're taking advantage of the fact that digital technology is continually getting better and cheaper. Uh, and so we can ride that wave. Um, our process is all about rapid prototyping, which is really common in a lot of technology um, companies, uh, where we, we try out ideas in a prototype, learn from, that, fr from the prototype, and um, if it works out, we continue with down that road. If it doesn't, then we, we discard the idea and, and move on to something else. And that allows us to move really fast. And um, as I mentioned, open source is, is key. It's, it's always been there from the beginning. Um, it's, it's part of our culture. And the project really wouldn't be where it is today without um, the sort of contributions we've received from people all around New Zealand. So there's really two technology streams to what we do. Uh, the first is, is recording birdsong, so this is how the project started. 
Um, it's all about developing a continuous objective recordings of, of birds for given locations around New Zealand, and we use a cheap Android phone and a custom, some custom software. Um, the recordings are uploaded to our cloud storage and for later analysis. And, and once you have that um, stream of recordings for a location, you can start doing long-term trending to see if bird populations are going up or down, to see if your predator management strategies are working. And we've also got people trying to do uh, species identification, uh, trying to find particular bird species in the recordings. So that's, that's quite exciting as well. The other technology that we're, we're using is, is thermal video. So um, we have this device which, which can be deployed into native uh, bush. Um, and instead of seeing light, it, it sees heat. And, um, and that's perfect for, the, for what we're, we're, we're trying to do because the animals we're interested in are, are mainly active at night. Um, and their body heat shows up really nicely against the, the cool background. Um, that allows us to be really sensitive we can, and allows us to detect small moving animals like rats, mice uh, and stoats um, and really well, um, much better than any of any, uh, the current sort of technology out there. And once you've able to record these animals, that's really interesting, but then somebody has to go and look at the videos. What, what if we can automatically uh, see what's going on and so, so that's the next thing is we've developed this uh, a classifier that will automatically identify our predators in the thermal video and tell us whether it's a possum a rat or a stoat automatically um, it's using machine learning um, which has been trained with thousands of examples of, of animals in, in various environments and when you combine all those things uh, you, you end up with something like this so this is um, taken from one of our test sites it's an actual possum. Uh, you can see the classifier has automatically identified where it is in the frame and correctly identified that it is actually a possum. There's, there's been no human intervention in, in producing this video. This is completely automated. And um, yeah, that, that's quite a powerful thing to be able to do. Because um, once you have that, you can start doing accurate automated autonomous uh, predator monitoring. So you can leave one of our devices out in, in the area that you're responsible of in the country and say, hey, we've got possums, we've got rats, we've got stoats, and you can adjust your management strategies based on what you find. We're also uh, in the process of pairing the camera with various elimination technologies, and that, that because we can automatically identify uh, predators, um, we, can, we can do very novel things that you couldn't otherwise do. Um, and and that's, that's really exciting, and we're looking forward to trying some of that stuff out in the field soon. Uh, we're also doing more interesting things with our uh, birdsong recorders, so uh, with, the, with, the, with the recordings, so that we can um, develop what, we want, what we're calling the cacophony index, which is uh, about developing a score for um, a given location to s give you an idea of whether the birdsong is going up or down. Uh, we're exploring, exploring audio lures. We're using uh, social or uh, prey sounds to bring animals closer to our devices, so you if increase their effective range. And we're also launching a commercial venture at the moment, uh, which is a sister company, which is separate from the, uh, the, the technology R&D part, uh, which is taking what we've done and commercializing it and, and getting what we've done into the hands of, of people around the country. And we've also got some interesting more sci-fi stuff on the horizon, which might involve drones deploying out of technology to remote uh, locations uh, that are otherwise hard to get to. So that's, uh, yeah, that's, what that's we're all awesome. About. Yeah, thank you so much for taking us through that. It's super fascinating. And uh, yeah, congratulations on, on, on all of your work so far. Yeah, how long have you been working on this project personally for? Uh, personally, oh, coming up on two, two, three, three years. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. yeah, and where did the idea come from originally? Well, uh, Grant Ryan was the founder. Okay, and, uh, I know Grant actually. He's yeah, a great yeah, guy. He's, yeah, he's done a lot of interesting things in his career. And um, yeah, post the earthquakes, he moved out to the Banks Peninsula here near Christchurch. And um, the place he moved into had a lot of rats, and he, and he went to town kind of poisoning and trapping and got rid of them. And he subjectively noticed that birdsong seemed to be getting better. Yes. And uh, he wanted, he was, because he's a bit of an engineer, he wasn't happy with just subjective uh, ideas. So he, he decided to try and measure that himself. Oh, and that's fantastic. That's where the birdsong recording idea came from. And, and then from there, he, he thought, well, what can we do in terms of elimination and, yes. and monitoring the predators? So 
that's when we moved into that sort of Right, zone. and am I right to say that at this point it's more about monitoring where they are through the heat and, and, and so on as opposed to actually it doesn't it doesn't kill the predators? That's, uh, that's right now, no, but okay. we are certainly actively working that's, towards that's that. That's the next yeah, step. They can so. like shoot out some bullets or something. <laughs> well, <laughs> that, that could be one, one, one thing. Yeah, yeah uh, that's certainly something we've talked about in the past, but that you can appreciate would have a lot of regulatory <laughs> and safety concerns. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so we are actually... Um, Initially, looking at something uh, a little bit uh, less controversial, which is uh, uh, new kinds of traps, basically, where okay. it's a trap that's very open, unlike conventional traps, which are intentionally handicapped because yeah. you don't want animals like birds to get into them. So right. they have to have very small holes, that kind of thing. Okay. So we're making traps that are very open and are linked to the camera, so the camera can say, hey, yes, we've got something interesting and it's okay. in the trap range, activate the trap Amazing. and cool. then send a signal to a human to yeah. go and deal with it. Thank you so much for yeah. sharing. Yeah, Emily, tell me a little bit more about your business. Yeah, so Roma is an app. So for instance, if you've got time this afternoon or you've got time this weekend or you're traveling somewhere new, um, it's hard to find suggestions of things to do. You know, the stuff that you really, that suit you, yeah. but, you know, not just the generic top 10. So um, we've got an app that's crowdsourced by locals. So Tens of thousands of people use it. Um, they've uploaded some really cool stuff from hidden waterfall walks to hidden cocktail bars to the best cheese scone. And um, we use machine learning to match it to the user. So you can open the app this afternoon, find something good to do with the weather, the time of day. Um, and once you've saved it, so it's a Tinder, Tinder interface. Okay. Um, once you've saved it, you're qualified so if you're driving or walking, you can get a notification saying, hey, ready to tick off the scone. Yep. Um, it's 200 metres away. And it's driving 24% um, conversion at the moment of people into businesses and walks. Wow. And so thousands of people each month are doing new things. So um, obviously as a business model, we've ended up um, offering an app native advertising to small businesses around New Zealand. And they're just finding it's um, a really, really great way to prove conversion, um, get new customers and really drive their authentic sort of their experience that they do best through okay. New Zealand. And if, uh, presumably one of the parts of the commercialization is that, you know, if you maybe companies will put certain discounts and so on through the, through the app and if you discover like an experience and you go and you show them the app they can help you with like a special di deal with yeah, that sort we're, of thing? We're getting, we're getting to that point. Okay. I think the big thing we were worried about is there's been a few case studies of companies in New Zealand doing um, discounted, you know, really yep. driving discount and behaviour and we, our whole goal is really driving that value proposition is getting oh, a yeah. loyal customer driving 10 more so but we're definitely looking at rewarding our at rewarding our roamers very soon. Yeah and what's who's the key target market? International people or local people? Um, local. So we found that um, you know, women that are 25 to 35 are our main yeah. demographic throughout okay. New Zealand. Disposable income, want to do some cool stuff, probably yeah. a new shot for Instagram over the weekend. Yes. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's our main main demographic, but we do find a lot of tourists get referred to it that right. come into New Zealand. What's the best thing you've ever discovered on Roma? Oh, that's such a good one. It would actually be in Melbourne. It was um, quoted as New York Times' best croissant. And I went to Brunswick, and I, I remember going, I'm in the middle of nowhere, this is not you know, going to be real. Yeah. And um, went around the corner and there was this beautiful shop, Loom, um, Loom Croissants, I think it is, okay. and this big line and it was just stunning and it was just such a cool example of what you can find. That's amazing. And, and what, for both of you, what's the greatest hope, you know, for the impact that you would like both of your companies to have in 10 or 15 years from now? Maybe well, so. well, that's <laughs> pretty straightforward. We want to do ourselves out of business. So we, well, we're not in a business, we're, yep. we are a non-profit, but um, yeah, we, we don't, we, we want to not have to exist. Predator, predator <laughs> we want free to be 20 free, predator free, but you know, 2050, yes. as the government wants to, is aiming for as well. Absolutely. And uh, it'd be wonderful if that was, you know, came true and yep. uh, if we were a big part of that. But, but in yeah. terms of the ultimate vision, do you see taking this technology around the world as well? There's already been a bit of interest in, in, in that regard. Um, it, whether that works with the current approaches we're taking yeah. remains to be seen. Uh, other countries have trickier problems because they've got animals that happen to look like other animals that they, they do want to keep. Yes. Like, for example, in the UK, you've got grey squirrels and red squirrels. They, they don't want the, the grey squirrels. So, you know, okay. it's, it's a little bit different. But yeah, um, yeah. it's certainly potential there for, for similar approaches. Absolutely. Overseas. What about you, Emily? Yeah. Um, for us, definitely enabling positive mental and social um, health and well-being. Yep. So, you know, seeing um, couples connect over getting out and doing more instead of watching TV or yep. um, helping young families, you know, get their yep. get their weekend plan really yep. bundled to them. So just, and also um, helping support small businesses, you know, a way in mm. which they can just upload their business and get 
instant results, see people turning up to a them. Absolutely. Yeah. And for, for both of you, what's your advice to you know entrepreneurs all over the country watching this who are wanting to start and scale new businesses? You know, um, when when people have these ideas, what's what's both of your advice for sort of like the best way to, particularly if they're in like technical, the best way to take the first steps to start building that technology and actually bring those ideas to fruition? Like, how did you, I'm keen to know more about the first steps of both of these projects and like what you did to bring them to life and some like tangible advice that people might be able to use or wanting to do the same thing. Yeah, I think definitely go out there and find um, the people that are doing doing the best version of it. So, you know, yeah. we're not that smart. I'm, I'm personally not a technical person, but right. I reached out and got the best advice I could get and the best skills I could get to help me along this process and it definitely cut out a lot um, of costs, obviously getting the right people involved and yeah. obviously staying really focused to what's the one key value proposition that your solution offers yeah. and really sticking to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can certainly echo that as well. Um, finding people who have particular areas of expertise that you can you can leverage um, is, is huge. We've, we've done that all throughout what we've been doing. Yeah. Um, also, uh, making sure you're building or building the right thing and being prepared to change tech if things aren't working out, you know, yes. doing your market research, exactly. really, um, yeah, really yeah. understanding what people are after and what's going to work. Yeah. And Emily, did you did you build internally? How did you fund this? Um, so originally I was in property, so I was about to go buy um, my first house okay. and decided to go into an app. So um, Smudge just over the road there, yes. they were um, Ruben, they were my developers. Ruben, yeah, 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 they were, yeah, they were fantastic. They came on board, um, supported my vision as crazy as it was and um, came on as investors. So they have been definitely the sort of key secret source to what Roma is now. Okay, so they took some equity and then built it out for you? Yeah, uh, so originally I um, had just paid for the first MVP version and okay. then they came on board and supported me through to actually launching it. Oh, that's amazing. And, and what's your advice to people going about having those conversations? Like, Because if you're wanting to build something and maybe, you, you know, that some of these development companies can be pretty expensive, what's yeah. the best way about sort of more innovative approaches to getting this stuff done? Definitely. There's a, a whole lot of different things you can do, going to companies, getting someone internal. Um, I've got someone internal now. It's definitely very cost effective, but... Um, there's a lot of young people at university that really want mm. to get involved in these startups and projects, so seeing if you can find the skills from university is probably a really good starting point. Mm. And for people thinking about taking the leap into entrepreneurialism, uh, what for you was that kind of catalyst or that moment where you decided to leave the property game and get into this field? <laughs> uh, it was when Dad said, are you actually going to do it? Right. <laughs> and I was like, oh God, you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> yeah, got to prove Dad wrong. Yeah, definitely. Exactly, exactly. Okay, awesome. And um, I guess uh, particularly in um, in the case of uh, the Cacophony project, I'm keen to understand like what support have you utilised that other people might not be aware of? Everything right. from government fund, government funding to accelerators, incubators, mentors? Sure, yeah. So we, um, because we're lucky that we're tackling a problem that's you know, broadly and nationally important, we've we've been really lucky to have um, support from um, a lot of private uh, private donations, um, just wealthy New Zealanders basically who've yeah. been, who want to see this problem solved and believe in what we're doing. Uh, we've also had a lot of early support from the Next Foundation. Oh, um, right. wow. Yeah, they, yeah. they have been fantastic. Oh, that's great. And, and recently, uh, we've seen support from Predator Free 2050, so the umbrella yep. organisation from the government. Okay, so, um, right, that's fantastic. It's always yeah. worth exploring those sort of foundations. Absolutely, and, yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, anything. Next Foundation's done a wonderful job. I see they just celebrated giving away half their fund or something recently. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, that, it's, that, it's very impressive. Really special, yeah. that is. And for, for both of you, what would you say, um, uh, you know, in your success and in building difficult, uh, you know, and building complex solutions to difficult problems. What's been the uh, the single quality of mind or state of mind that's best served you and your success? I think it's what we were just saying before: is focus. Definitely, just knowing yeah. what you're doing. And oh, I mean, passion's the obvious one. You've got to right. have something that's going to get you out of bed. But yeah. definitely, um, focus has been a big thing. Is focusing on one metric, focusing on the one thing you're actually solving and not yeah. getting too destructive, which is so easy in this day and age. Yeah, yeah. Mm, I totally, yeah, determination and focus. Yeah, <laughs> that's, determination. That's, that's, that's most of it. Yeah, yeah and, um, for, for, and then 5% you know, great idea and the rest <laughs> yeah. is just hard work. Execution, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And for both of you on business, what lesson has taken you the longest to learn? Oh, that's a good question. Probably was actually focused. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's probably actually learning there's one key metric in every company and it's actually sticking to it. Yeah. Uh, it was, you so know, we're was, talking about off camera, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, is it users? Is it visits? Is it what? And it finally took me to realise it's visits that we're measuring and just sticking to that and that's what we judge success by. Yeah. As hard as it is to judge dollars and all sorts of other things. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm not too sure. I, I guess um, learning when to use off the shelf 
technologies and when to do it in-house. That's, yeah. that's always a bit of a struggle for us. We have a tendency to want to do things in-house all the time when yes. there's perfectly good things out there. So it's finding that balance. And sometimes you use off-the-shelf stuff and realize you probably should have gone the other way. But yeah, yeah. yeah be, be really careful about and deciding which way to go. Right. And for you, you know, what inventor in the world has inspired you the most? Ooh, oh, that's hard. I would, <laughs> I've always been a huge fan of Brian Chisky. I love Airbnb. Yeah. I love the story. I love the experience yeah. economy. I love their philosophy. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely, but he's been my inspiration. And yeah. as we said, Victoria Ranson's definitely yeah. the, the go-to girl for me. She's amazing. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Any entrepreneur or a person you've really looked up to who's been some of your early heroes and inspirations? Oh, I don't really have any. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys, for taking the time. It's uh, hugely inspirational to learn about what you're both working on. Obviously, very different industries, but both solving, um, you know, big problems. And I think uh, I look forward to, um, you know, seeing this technology come to life and downloading the app and going to be in Sydney next week. So I'll try and find oh, a, go. a good macaroni <laughs> cheese or something that I, that I might not be expecting. So thank you so much uh, to the viewers for tuning in from all around the country. We've had uh, thousands and thousands of people tuning in all day today, which has been uh, absolutely awesome. So we really appreciate you all making the time to watch these sessions and contribute questions and ideas, um, you know, I think this proves that there's just so much amazing technology and innovation coming out of New Zealand, coming out of Christchurch. Uh, you know, so far we've been in Auckland, Wellington, Christchurch, uh, tomorrow in Dunedin, then Friday back in Auckland. So it's been a huge honour to be able to bring some of these stories to life and share the advice of some pretty phenomenal people with you. So thank you so much for the viewers, all of you for tuning in. Thank you to Matt and Gary behind the scenes today, Ali, for all of your hard work as well. And uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow in Dunedin. We have one more session to go today. Thank you so much.